KUTT TV presents Candy Home with your host, Vanessa Curry. Hi, welcome to Candy Home, where you learn to do it yourself. Today we're going to learn about stripping, furniture that is. <laughs> okay, uh, first of all, you need to talk a little bit about where you can work and what items you'll need. You can work in your garage, uh, basement, carport, um, maybe just uh, outside in a, a, sh a work shed, but you need an area where you can spread out your stuff in a, a flat surface such as this table. Now we've covered this table with some newspaper because no one's reading it anyway, and then after we're done it's easy cleanup, we can just throw it away. Uh, you're also going to need some safety items such as a pair of safety glasses or goggles, a mask, some work gloves, some work towels, and of course uh, a scraping tool. And then you're going to need some specific ones uh, in a moment, and I'm going to discuss that with you. Um, first of all, we're going to talk about, uh, we've got four different methods that you can learn how to scrape something. Uh, you find a, a piece of uh, furniture that you would like to refinish, and uh, something that looks like this, uh, this is just called the scraping method. You're going to get a scraping tool, something like this. Uh, I like this particular um, one because it has a curved one where you can uh, scrape around round objects such as spindles. It also has a corner where you can get deep dark into the corners and get that paint out. Now there's two reasons why, two things you want to remember when you're stripping the old paint away in preparations for your refinishing. Uh, if you're going to just repaint it, you don't have to get 100% of the paint off. Uh, you want to get as much as you do, can get off and then you're going to smooth it. Just so the surface is smooth, you can paint over it. However, if you're going to stain this project after we're done, you have to get 100% of the paint off. Now probably if you have an item such as this one where you can see that the paint is already peeling off pretty well, you can just use the scraping method. You're just going to put your, uh, and you're going to go against the grain of the wood. That's the best way to get the paint off. See how it's flaking off nicely there? You go against the grain of the wood, uh, otherwise if you go, it's not going to uh, do as well. And in this particular case, it's already flaked off quite well, so the scraping method is uh, quite reasonable. You may also have to use a utility knife, also known as a, buck, a box cutter, to get into those hard to reach areas with your um, tool. Uh, the second type of stripping method is sanding. And you're, com you're familiar with uh, sanding paper you can do it either by hand or you can do it with an electric hand sander. This is called a palm sander uh, or something larger. You probably just want to use with a, a piece of uh, sandpaper yourself in small areas and larger areas use an electric sander. But if you're going to use the electric sander, make sure to wear your goggles and your mask, especially if your sander doesn't have a dust catcher in the back because it will get in your eyes and your mouth. So on your, if you're just going to hand sand a small area, all you have to do is take your, and rub it back and forth. And the advantage of doing it with sandpaper is you're doing two things at once. You're stripping off the old paint and you're also uh, getting it smooth and ready. So it's more efficient if you do it uh, that way. But again, you want to make sure that you're in an area that's uh, uh, clear, and away from children because some of the items that you use could be dangerous for them. Uh, on round objects, you have to be, uh, you could use your scraper tool to get in those little nooks and areas, see how it's flaking out, or you can use your sandpaper and mold it the way you need to to get into those certain areas. See how that's just flaking off just right. And it's going to be smooth. So. Uh, we went through the first two methods, and after we take a break for our sponsor, we'll come back and talk about two more. Thank you. Flea Market, Tyler Fairgrounds, and it looks like the humans are going. Yippee! Let's go too! Flea Market has something for everyone. Well, 
Welcome back to Handy Home, where we're learning how to strip furniture. Uh, one good thing about stripping furniture is you learn how to reuse, and it, it's uh, the process of refinishing furniture makes you feel like you've accomplished something, but it also saves our environment by not throwing these pieces of furniture in our landfills. Okay, the last two uh, methods I'd like to show you, uh, the next one is using a heat gun. Um, this is a heat gun you can buy at any uh, uh, hardware store. Uh, some of them come with a little uh, scraper attached, um, and what you'll find out is you usually lose them, as I have, and so you have to use your scraper also. But be very careful around the heat gun because it gets extremely hot, and you can burn your hands or leg, uh, depending upon where you set it down, or catch something on fire. Uh, so what the heat gun does is just basically melts uh, and lets separates the paint from the wood so that you are able to... So we're going to turn it on here and we're going to heat up this area. You don't want to get it too close to the wood because you can either scorch the wood or burn it or even set it on fire and that's not what we want to do. Now you can see it getting a little scorched there and you'll see it bubble up a little bit and once it bubbles up, see those little bubbles right here? Then you can, you can take, turn off and then you can scrape and it's, e it's easier to come off once it's well heated. Now, um, not to say that you only have to use one of these methods. You can use a combination of methods in order to refinish your furniture. Um, so again, you just want to make sure that it's close enough that it heats up the paint. You'll see the bubbles as the paint rises off and then you can scrape it off. If you have a scraper tool at the end, you can do all at once at the same time. Finally, I'd like to talk about the final method uh, is a chemical method. You can buy a stripper, a can of stripping agent at um, one of your local hardware stores. Uh, they're very caustic, so you have to be very careful. You should wear gloves when you're handling it uh, and not rubber gloves because this chemical can melt the rubber, so you have to get that it can withstand that. Uh, what you, and you want an, uh, an air room where you can get air flowing, you can breathe this in, it can make you sick. So all you're going to do is take a paintbrush, and I've already done this in preparation, you're going to paint it on the area you want to affect, and you're going to let it set for about 15 minutes and let it dry. And again, the chemical is going to separate the paint from the uh, item, the wood that you're trying to do. Once it is separated, all you have to do is then take your scraper and see how easily that peels off with the chemical. So advantage of using a chemical, the advantage of using a chemical is that uh, you can, as you can see, you get large chunks of paint that comes off and you don't have to worry about the little bit uh, that comes in. Now, um, you wanna make sure that it's thoroughly dried from the chemical reaction and you might want to wipe it off with one of your shop towels uh, before you start sanding this product, um, be able to do that. Um, you can also, instead of scraping, if you are into one of these curved areas here that are very difficult to either reach uh, with a scraper, you can put the chemical there and you could use your shop towels. Now these aren't just regular uh, paper towels, these are shop towels, they're very strong and uh, you can just, once the chemical is almost dry, you can just simply wipe it off and the paint will come off with it. But make sure you throw these away immediately where children or animals or pets cannot get into it because it still has that caustic material on it and can burn them. So, as you can see, we have four different methods. Again, you can combine the methods, whatever's best for you, but once you finish scraping off all the paint, then you have to uh, sand it lightly to smooth out the surface, then you're ready whether to paint it or to stain your um, product that you're wanting to redo. Um, if, uh, so make sure after you're finished to clean up your area and dispose of all the products and uh, then you'll, you'll have your project ready. So until next time, this has been Handy Home.